I'm Wally Robinson, WNEW News. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. I'm led to understand, Mr. Fest, that you know the island of Mondunga very well. <laughs> Just over a year ago, with 380 good fighting men, I installed the maniac who governs it now, President Andre Bocard. Some folks might say it was the only mistake I ever made. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way. And if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. This is Howard Duff speaking for Richard Widmark. A mercenary is a soldier who fights for money. How come there's such a terrifying flavor to the word? And it really is terrifying. Ask any African. The mercenaries have been around for a long time. The ancient Greeks used them, and so did the Romans. Today, the Papal Guard, though they don't have to fight anymore, is made up of Swiss mercenaries, as it has been for four and a half centuries. And it's arguable. Does a soldier, anyway, always fight for a cause he believes in? Or maybe sometimes just for his paycheck? But there's a special breed of mercenary around today, and they've earned themselves a very bad name. Like the passenger in that London taxi there. He's one of that special breed, and a very dangerous man. He comes from Africa, from any part of Africa, wherever the so-called third world is emerging. Usually to the accompaniment of a great deal of fighting, tribe against tribe, one political philosophy against another. You must be American, sir. Your first visit to London. What do you mean, American? Oh, Canadian, huh? Drive, driver, and shut up. Yes, sir. This man is here in London secretly. No one knows who he is, or even what his name is. He's up to his habitual deadly mischief for money. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Mercenaries by Alan Caillou. Our stars, Lloyd Bachner and Antoinette Bauer. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops for value. They wear them in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears tough skins. The toughest jeans in Sears tough jeans territory. Fashioned from a permapress tri-blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears tough skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. 
I've been working with furniture for 25 years, so I know about quality. And that's why I recommend a Sears Benchmade sofa for your family. There's a heavy-duty hardwood frame braced to withstand stress. The coil spring construction gives long-lasting comfort. And you can choose from fabrics and attractive solids or bright prints, all treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector. Compare the quality of a Sears Benchmade with other fine sofas, and you'll be surprised. Styling, durability, and comfort. Benchmade, a great place to relax. Now at most Sears retail stores. By most accepted standards, England is a fairly peaceful sort of place. It has a long military history, of course. But most of the soldiers you see there these days are either changing the guard at Buckingham Palace or playing concerts with the military bands in the public parks. But just once in a while, a real fighting man turns up. A mercenary coming from God knows where and arriving at the front door of a fashionable London townhouse. Good morning, sir. You don't have to know my name. Mr. Matassi is expecting me. Yes, of course. Do please come in. Come in. Your visitor, Mr. Matassi. Well, well, well. So good to see you again, dear boy. Comfortable flight. So, so. And would you care for a cup of tea, Colonel Fest? <sighs> no. And let me present. This is the famous Colonel Fest, Mrs. Vera Tatters. Colonel, truly a very great pleasure. I'm delighted to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Mr. Fest, if you don't mind, I can't walk around London calling myself a colonel. Of course. I understand. You do? I thought for a moment there that you didn't. Uh, uh, what about a drink, my good friend? Is it still cognac? Yes, a double. And I don't like my name tossed around to every Tom, Dick and Harry in town. Even your secretary seems to know it. I would hardly call such a charming and lovely lady Tom, Dick or Harry. Uh, Mrs. Charters will be privy to all our discussions. She has to know who you are. Then suppose you tell me just who she is. Uh, Vera Charters, Mr. Fest, is our bankroll. Then it's truly a great pleasure for me too, Mrs. Charters. I drink to the success of our very exciting adventure. And I do hope you two will get along together. I'm quite sure we will. If only because I am going to make Mr. Fest a very rich man again. I'd say that's a good basis for a solid friendship. Cheers. Uh, cheers. I'm led to understand, Mr. Fest, that you know the island of Mondunga very well. <laughs> Just over a year ago, with 380 good fighting men, I installed the maniac who governs it now, President Andre Bokar. Some folks might say it was the only mistake I ever made. But whatever they say, I don't give a damn. And are you aware of what's happening out there now? I know the little bits and pieces that find their way to the newspapers. Maybe it might more than that. But tell me anyway. Andre Bacar has jailed or executed all of his ministers and replaced them with illiterate teenagers. He has his own, uh, I think the press calls them, goon squads, dressed up in army uniforms to terrorize the local citizenry. He's become a monster. A shame, isn't it? I could name you a dozen countries in Africa that have the similar... Mr. Fest, we're not really too interested in the rest of Africa at the moment. You know about saffron, perhaps? Saffron? I know it's a spice that comes from a kind of crocus they grow there. The whole island stinks of it. So? Saffron is successfully cultivated in only three places in the world. Pakistan, Iran, and Mondunga. The interests I represent are in the spice trade. President André Bokar, whom you personally helped to overthrow the previous government... I didn't just help, I did it. Of course, yes. André Bocard has run the whole economy and the saffron trade with it into the ground. He has to be removed, Mr. Fest. You want me to go to war over a few square miles of crocus fields? <laughs> what are you going to pay me off in, curry powder? You're a very impatient man, Mr. Fest. Yes, I am. The Dutch and the Portuguese threw their armies and their navies at each other for more than 200 years over the spice trade. If you're romantically inclined, which give me leave to doubt... You might say that the spice trade has created empires and lost them, too. Saffron is the most expensive of all the spices. 
Over the last decade, my people have taken an average of $30 million yearly from Mondunga's crocus fields. The last year, since you put André Boca in power, the take has been nil. We don't like that too much. And don't worry about the money. Enough has been set aside, I assure you. The question is, can it be done? Can you do it? Winter's leaving, all right. Leaving your lawn a mess. Sears Lawn Cleanup Sale to the rescue. Save 25% on strong Permanex trash containers. 32-gallon size, now $14.99. Save a dollar on Bagzilla trash bags. And feed your lawn Sears Superfine Lawn Food. Now a dollar off, it's just $4.99 for our 5,000-square-foot coverage bed. Save $3 on a dropper rotary spreader. Sears Lawn Cleanup Sale at most Sears retail stores. Sale ends March 24th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. I can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The Illumini Sears Muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the Muzzler promise. Sears promises that the Muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one. Free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. The Muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Need a shirt to go with a skirt? Enhanced new pants make the best of a vest? See the ladies, tailored short sleeve shirts at Sears. Pointed collars, placket front with bottoms cut straight. That's great. Classic shirts that are easy to wear. Polyester fabric makes them easy care. Solids from white to navy blue. Lots of soft tones, too. Plenty of prints, we've got them in store. They're just the thing you've been looking for this spring. Mrs. Tailored short sleeve shirts in the women's sportswear department at most larger Sears retail stores. You don't mind if I help myself, Matassi, do you? Mrs. Trotter needs a lecture and my throat is dry. Uh, yes, of course, of course. Forgive me. Well, let's put it like this, Mrs. Trotter. Your spice wars are past history, and my business is today. And today the whole of Africa's in upheaval. Almost every country that's founded so-called independence is celebrating it by making war on its neighbors. But, and this is a very interesting but, they've all learned one very important fact. That if they want to win a war, they have to hire white mercenaries. And if they want the best, they hire me. I take in a few hundred men, I tell the general in command, okay, go fishing, or spend a couple of weeks with your women, or maybe fly off to Paris and buy a few more fancy uniforms. I don't care what you do as long as you don't get in my hair until it's safe for you to make your triumphal entry into your neighbor's crummy little capital. I've done it 50 times. You want me to tell you the story of my successes country by country? Spare us, Mr. Fest. We're already impressed with your legendary expertise, a prelude, no doubt, to a demand for an exorbitant price. Just don't ask me, can it be done, can I do it? I can take Mondunga again, blindfolded in the dark with one arm tied behind my back. All I need is a reasonable amount of money. Uh, you see, Mrs. Charters, I told you. So before we discuss figures, it's my turn to make a point, I think. Go ahead. Drink. Thank you, no. In your harangue, Mr. Fest... You forgot to mention Angola, or even Ethiopia, where you suffered the most humiliating defeats. I have to admit it. Times are changing, you know. Not too long ago, we were fighting against black savages, armed with spears, assegais, if you will, bows and arrows. Today, the great powers are pumping armaments out there so fast, tanks, artillery, missiles, rocket launchers. It's getting to be so a civilized man can't just walk over them anymore. But don't let that worry you. The Mondungans have very little of that kind of stuff, and frankly, I don't care what they've got. <laughs> Did you know that one of my men is still there? Oh, yes, of course. And we know a great deal about him. Captain Juan Rinaldi, mercenary officer serving Colonel Fest in the capacity of communications expert, uh, took part in last year's invasion. Mondunga remained behind at the request of the new president, André Bocard, to train his army. And it raises a point, doesn't it? His loyalty. Uh, precisely. It's to me. If I whistle, Rinaldi will come running. Now, we mercenaries stick together, Matassi. It's one of the things we're good at, sticking together. It's part of what makes us strong. 
There's one thing you may not be aware of, Mr. Fest. It seems that President Bocar and your Captain Rinaldi have become good friends. Very good friends. What makes you think, Mrs. Charters, there's anything about Mondunga I'm not aware of? I keep a finger on the pulse of every country in Africa that might one day need my services. And that means nearly every bloody one of them. Now, Mondunga's been fairly high on that list for quite some time now. How good it is to know that. It will make it so much easier and quicker. It would be nice to have this over in time for the planting season. Then it's time to talk money. Of course. It's predicated, is it not, on how many men you would need? No, that's none of your business. I get the men together, I buy the guns. I'm sure we can buy the armaments you need far more reasonably than you can. We have a good many friends in high places. If you would give us a breakdown... No, I run this show without interference. And that means without help from a bunch of amateurs. Very well. We thought a million and a half dollars would be about right. That's exactly half the figure I had in mind. And I want that half up front. Why don't we make it a comfortable two million? Three. Two. Oh, please, please. Uh, Mr. Fest, I have always considered you a gentleman. Uh, one of nature's gentlemen, I might say, as I am myself. And gentlemen really should not haggle over money like... Uh, like merchants. Two and a half. In Swiss franc? Done. Let's drink on it. What about President André Bocar? You want him killed? Not particularly. I don't suppose it matters one way or the other. Well, why don't we bring him to trial first? As you wish. And whom do you want for your new president? I know a number of likely candidates. <laughs> oh, what a foolish question, Mr. Vest. <laughs> foolish indeed. Then I drink to your health, Mr. President. And how soon, do you think, could you mount this operation? I'll start planning as soon as the first payment is made. Good day, Mr. President-elect, Mr. Torres. We're in business. Mr. Fest? Uh, say, I just remembered. I've got a wife out there. Pretty little thing. Black is the ace of clubs, but really very cute. I can't for the life of me remember her bloody name. I wonder if I'll see her again. Good day. Well, didn't I tell you? What do you think? He's an ill-tempered brute. He's excessively arrogant, and he's broke. That makes him perfect. We'd better send a telex to New York. They'll be waiting to hear. Tell them... Tell them we won't need all of the five million that was set aside. We settled for... We settled for three and a half. No, it was only... Oh, 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 yes, of course. <laughs> oh, what a pleasure it is to do business with you, Mrs. Charters. <laughs> the world of the mercenary is a wide, wide world of violence. England is far behind us now, and we're nearly 7,000 miles away aboard a trawler off the coast of Africa. Below decks in the officer's mess of a battered trawler, Colonel Fest is conferring with a colleague, Major Vicek. And exactly where are we now, Vicek? Well, we are 30 miles off Mundunga Island. We'll be dropping anchor in another three miles. If this decrepit old pile of junk can make three more miles. What do you mean, decrepit? I paid $47,000 for this trawler. She's a beauty. And so was the witch of Endor. Now, I figure the starboard engine has maybe one more day to live. Surprises the hell out of me how we got this far. You've got to have faith, Vicek. A ship is just like a woman. She gets to be a little past it, so you can do what you want with her. Well, uh, this old lady's falsies fell off a long time ago. <laughs> Here, are we out of bourbon? Got to be another bottle there someplace. Pour me a cognac while you're about it. Have we heard from Ismail on the island yet? We have indeed, and that's beautiful. The report's still coming in. There's a whole lot of stuff, but I thought I'd better let you know right away. Uh, you'll want to move the operation up three hours earlier. No way. Now, wait till you hear. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. When you shop, remember that there's more than just the price of the product to consider. There's also the reputation of the seller. And if you have a question about reliability, check with your local Better Business Bureau. It's also good practice to check the warranty, what it does and doesn't cover. 
It's also a good idea to find out if you have to pay for shipping if the merchandise must be returned. And check to see what other charges, if any, you're going to have to pay. Another way to be a careful shopper is to know something about the policies of the store or the seller. Consumers should find out what the return policy is. Does the store give cash refunds? Does it provide credit on future purchases? Does it allow returns only on certain products and not on others? Look, you better get all the facts before you buy. This has been a consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. My darlings, your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world, and I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS radio network stations. Below decks in the office's mess of a battered trawler, Colonel Fest is conferring with a colleague, Major Vichek. President Bokar is addressing the whole populace tonight at 10 o'clock, especially as an army. I've been told to stand by at their barracks to hear why, you are ready for this, to hear why they haven't been paid for two months. You know, I couldn't be yeah, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. The army's not getting paid. Two months in arrears. Good. Good. We can really turn that to advantage. Well, these comic opera generals never learn the first rule of dictatorship. Pay your army well and pay them on time. Well, I don't know if I want to take Bakar at the radio station. If he's there, he'll have 200 men with him. Well, I guess that won't be too rough. And is that stupid grin meant to mean something? <laughs> that speech has been pre-recorded. Aha! What it means is, at 10 o'clock tonight, Andre Bocard will be, as usual, lying in his bed in a drunken stupor. <laughs> it is beautiful, isn't it? The whole of his 2,000-man army, disgruntled and worrying about their pay, will be standing by in one building. I've got to admit you choose your words well. Beautiful is right. Well, of course, there's bound to be some of the goon squads on the street, and uh, you'll have to worry about the presidential guard. Huh? 380 of them. No problem. Come. Brought you some lunch, Colonel. Major. And what exactly is that? I don't really know, Colonel. Looks a bit like hamburger to me, only a new colour. Cook says it's terrific. All that money lying around, how come we can't hire a good cook, Vitek? A good sea cook? <laughs> There's no such animal. No, don't worry about it. It's, it's what they call good home cooking. Uh, right, l- let's take a look at the maps. Yeah. Ah, they've stopped. And we are at the staging area just over the horizon, one mile and a half over it. How many men will you need to take the radio station? Ah, uh, 20, 25. You get one rubber boatload, 12 men. Okay. Ah, there goes the anchor. Uh, can I have Sergeant Hanson? No, I want Hanson on the number four squad. They've got to cruise the streets with their bullhorns and commandeered vehicles. Let the populace know the government has fallen. Order the curfew. You get Sergeant Klein. Okay. At the moment, and subject to change when Ismail completes his intelligence report, the operation goes ahead exactly as we planned, except for the timing. At each hour, minus 48 minutes, squads one and two hit the beaches here and here. Yeah. They'll all be dressed in native cloaks over their uniforms, their machine pistols and grenades hidden. And I want every man in full uniform under the covering. If anything goes wrong, they get rid of the disguise right away. I don't want my own men shooting at each other because they look like Mandungans in the dark. Got it. 
HR minus 15. They'll have reached the town. I want all 24 of them individually on the main intersections, of which there are only 16 or so anyway. They're all plotted out here on the map. Mm -hmm. They just hang around there, speak to nobody, keep a low profile. Right. HR minus 32, squad 3, that's your group, lands here. Yeah. You take your men straight to the radio station by the route marked on the map. Mm -hmm. You already know most of what you have to do, but I'll have another very important job for you. Now, squads four and five go to the army barracks, spread out, take care of the sentries with their knives. Yeah. They don't want any shooting at this point. Squad six, that's mine. We land right at the wharf at H hour minus five. We march straight up to the presidential palace and take it. You are going to take the presidential palace with 12 men? With two or three hundred of the guard on duty? Exactly. I've got a very fancy idea about that. And that has to be the worst meal I ever ate in my life. No, you know, I still don't like it. Don't forget the guard was trained by Rinaldi. There won't exactly be a pushover. Well, you just worry about that radio station, Major. You're 27 minutes ahead of me. There's plenty of time for what you have to do. Another job, you said. I'm going to pre-record a speech of my own. You'll replace the president's tape with mine. And I guarantee you one thing. When they hear what I have to say, within five minutes, there won't be a single Mondugan soldier willing to fight us. Well, I hope you're right about that. You realize we are trying to conquer a country with 72 men? I told you, Vicek, you've got to have faith. Not only in 40-year-old trawlers and women, in 40-year-old commanding officers, too. Um, the report from Ismail on Mundunga, Colonel. Oh, good. Thank you, folks. Uh, Ten o'clock is the crucial time. Ninety percent of the army is standing by in the barracks, including most of the senior officers. One hundred and forty of the presidential guard on duty at the palace. Aha, the door in the southwest wall has only seven men in charge of a very drunken sergeant. Now, where's that drawing? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I got it here. The southwest door, that, uh, that's right here. Let me see that. Ah. The president will be in his bed. The bedroom's here. Yes, that'll take us, uh, three minutes. Good. And listen to this. The president has accepted my cover story completely. Well, why shouldn't it? It's always worked before. I'm dining with him this evening at 7.30. His young mistress, whose name is Sari, will be there, as will Captain Rinaldi. Ah, interesting. Rinaldi, you and he were always very close, weren't you? Yeah, he is a great guy, one of the best. An academic question. Can we still trust him? Uh, of course we can. Just wanted confirmation. The story goes that he's become very buddy-buddy with Andre Bacar, that drug and alcohol crazed maniac. So what? Look, you know Rinaldi as well as I do. Just three things in life he's crazy about. Good food, any kind of liquor, and bad women. And as long as Bacar keeps him supplied with those three things, well, of course they will be buddy-buddy. Good. I always like confirmation of my own instincts. So... Tell Sparks, when Ismail comes on the air again, have him meet me at the jetty at H hour minus five with Captain Rinaldi. Yeah. Well, that will mean Ismail has to blow his cover quite some time before we begin to hit the beaches. That is absolutely correct. And if I'm wrong about Rinaldi, will also blow the whole operation, won't it? Let's just say it'll make it a hell of a lot tougher for us. But we have to have faith in our friends, too, Major. And I made up my mind about Rinaldi a long time ago. Once a mercenary, always a mercenary. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's good enough rule to go by. I just hope he doesn't turn out to be the exception that proves it. Tell Sparks to stand by to make a tape for me. Yeah, we will do. And, uh, send... Uh, what's his name to me? The man who runs the Mimeo machine? Corporal Williams? Okay. I want to print up some money. You want to print money? On a Mimeo machine? The army hasn't been paid, my dear Vitek. And we didn't bring that Mimeo machine merely to print menus. How long do your pantyhose last? 
Do you want the answer in minutes or hours? You should try Sears and Durables. The pantyhose that lasted an average of 18 days of normal wear in a test with 400 women. The women in our test wore in Durables day after day after day and as a group averaged 18 days. A patented process makes them strong so they last. And sheer, so they look great. No pantyhose lasts forever. How long do your pantyhose last? In Durables, at larger Sears retail stores. Put together a whole wardrobe with the classic collection separates at Sears. Now you can buy the pants to a suit, the vest to a suit, and the jacket to a suit separately. So every well-tailored piece of the outfit you buy is geared to your size and build. You can create a more casual look with solid color blazers and patterned slacks, or patterned sport coats and solid color slacks. The colors coordinate to let you mix and match. Now that's style, sense, and satisfaction. The classic collection at most larger Sears retail stores. What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears with a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in button holder, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95 and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. On the African island of Mandunga, the ruthless and maniacal president, Andre Bokar, is giving a small dinner party for just three guests. But he is so incapacitated by drink, he hardly knows they are there. The three guests are the president's good friend, Captain Rinaldi, the European who trained his troops, the president's current mistress, Sari, who is sweet and more or less innocent at 16 years of age, and very beautiful indeed, and a new arrival who calls himself Ishmael Pasha. The word Pasha means Lord, and Lord Ishmael is quiet and dignified and persuasive. And if he is afraid of the terrible risks he is running, he gives no sign of it. His life is in grave danger. He is playing a very deadly game. Money, Mr. President. It's money that lies at the core of the whole matter. And my ruler, whom God preserve, is prepared to finance your government to 80% of its budget over the next 12 months. And he asks nothing in exchange. It uh, really sounds too good to be true. What does he have up his sleeve, Ismail Pasha? Oh, nothing, Captain Ronaldi. It is merely a token of his great respect for the contempt that His Excellency President Andre Bokar has shown towards the colonial powers. A most laudable gesture that has, uh, however, impoverished Mondunga. I repeat, Mr. President... Mr. President. Andre, wake up, please. You must listen to this. Uh, 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 sorry, my love. How are you? Are, are, are guests happy? Yes, yes, Andre, they are happy. But you must listen to what Ishmael Pasha has to say. It's very important. Ismail. Ismail who? Ismail Pasha, Andre. Ismail Pasha, Excellency, from the Central Africa Empire, an emissary from the Emperor Bokassa the First. Emperor who? Bokassa the First, Andre. Oh yes, I knew him well. We were at school together in Makerere. He was, uh, he was always in. And then, some poop. <laughs> he would like to offer you a great deal of money, Mr. President. Uh, oh, oh, really? Uh, oh, not, not an ignorant some poop, huh? Uh, a scholar and a gentle brother. Uh, Andre is very tired. Take him to bed, sorry. We will talk again in the morning. So, now that we are alone, Ismail Pasha, why don't you tell me who you really are? I beg your pardon? Oh, Bokar fell for your story, hook, line, and sinker. But I don't. I see a familiar pattern emerging, and it intrigues me. Let me make a wild guess. Have you ever heard of a colonel named... First... Colonel Fest, he is my commanding officer, Captain Rinaldi, as he is yours. 
<laughs> I knew it. My God, almost the first moment you showed your face here, I smelled the devious hand of Colonel Fest. And where is he now, Ismail? The Colonel will be coming ashore at this very moment. Shall we take a walk? Three points to starboard. Aye, aye, sir. Come in there, Colonel. I see them. Bring us in. Throw up a ladder. Colonel! Good! So good to see you. How are you, Ronaldo? Oh, fine, fine. This is a great night. Ismail, a good job of work. Thank you, Colonel. Is Vicek with you? Vicek is about to take over the radio station. He'll be busting in there any minute now. Now we are all anxiously awaiting the speech that His Excellency, Prime Minister André Bokar, the greatly loved ruler of Mondunga, will make to his adoring citizens in a few moments. And while we contain our impatience for the appearance of his much beloved Excellency, we will hear now the Bondungan strings as they play. Okay, Major V. Jack, we're off the air. Okay, looks to me like you're the announcer in chief. What's your name, fella? Oh. My, my, my name is Mohammed Sofragi, sir. My, my friends call me Wireless. Yeah? All right, Wireless. You got a tape there of the president's speech, I do believe. Yes, sir. Yeah, get rid of it. Replace it with this yes, one. Yes, yes, sir. Any, anything you say, sir. Yeah. And here's the introduction you read. You read it calmly, clearly. And if you can't manage a certain degree of pleasure, you just might get the top of your head blown right off. Ten seconds to ten o'clock. So, settle down. Let's have quiet. Seven seconds. We're on the air again. Four, three, two, one, go. In, in place of the president's speech, we have a more important announcement to make. The government has fallen. Now, stay tuned for a speech from Colonel Fest who is in military control of the island. <laughs> Speech coming up. People of Mondunga, you're listening to the voice of Colonel Fest, whom I'm sure you well remember. I address my remarks first to the splendid army of Mondunga, and I have great news for you. A paymaster is at this very moment on his way to your barracks with your back pay, which I am providing. To the Presidential Guard, I say this. Many of my vehicles are cruising the streets around the palace, scattering slips of paper with the legend, Presidential Guard only, and my signature. They are marked $10, $20, $50. Some of them are even marked $100. Now hear me well. Every member of the Guard who presents himself to me tomorrow morning may redeem those slips of paper for their full value in cash on the spot. Your wages, moreover, and the wages of every soldier in the army are doubled as of this moment. If you declare your allegiance to me. If you don't, you will be shot. <laughs> Listen to me. The island has been invaded. The island... <coughs> invaded? Invaded? What? It's true. I heard it on the radio. But, but who, who would dare? Colonel Fest. Fest? Sorry. <coughs> Get me Rinaldi quickly. Captain Rinaldi is gone. 
I don't know where. The guard commander, then. Hurry. The guard commander is gone, too. There's no one left. Are you telling me that I, I am alone now? No, Andre. You're not alone. I am with you. We'll die together if we must. What do you mean, die? They can't kill me. I am Andre Bocard. Get dressed, Bocard. The new president will want to see you. Take over here, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. you men give the lady a hand? Thank you. I'm quite capable of... Oh. And that is not the way, sailor, to help a lady ashore. Just watch out for that gangbang, Mum. It's kind of slippery. I'm quite sure I can manage. Oh, my dear Colonel Fest. How wonderful it is to be home again. Welcome to Mondongo, Mr. President. Uh, I'm surprised to see you here, Mrs. Charters. I can't think of a single intelligent reason why you should be, Colonel. Uh, is it all over, Fess? Of course. I'd never have called you ashore if it were not. And you're Captain Rinaldi, Colonel. Did you have to arrest him after all? Rinaldi's at the barracks, spending a great deal of your money to ensure that the army comes over to us. And you won't need that gun, Mr. President. The town is secure. I can still hear shooting. They're firing into the air, wasting their bullets to show their great happiness. Oh. And the tyrant, Bokar. Under arrest at the palace, Mr. President. Then you may take me to him. You really look like the prize idiot you are, Andre Bokar. A ridiculous uniform. I never saw so many medals in my life. Uh, did you earn any of them? But I uh, see, I, I, I am surrendering unco uh, unconditionally. All I ask is a boat, a, a, a boat to the mainland, some money. Uh... If you're sober enough to talk, you're sober enough to know you're going to die, Boca. <laughs> Well, that's what's called shot while trying to escape, I believe. The outside world doesn't approve of that sort of thing, Matassi. Uh, Mr. President, if you don't mind the fest, and the outside world will never know, will you tell them? What can I tell them? I didn't see or hear a thing. Will Mrs. Tartars? I will be the first to tell them, Mr. President, of Andre Bocard's suicide. Then there's only the girl. Uh, what's her name? Sorry, I think. Well, I guess that makes it a kind of suicide pact, doesn't it? No one will miss them. Get rid of the bodies for me, Fest, discreetly. I will go now in search of some of my good friends. Report to me in one hour. Oh, my God. There'll be a lot more executions before the night is out. Rough, isn't it? Is it possible that the new regime might not be much better than the last? I never imagined it would be. But you wanted a new president, and I have installed him for you. That means the rest of my money is due. And since I control the guns here now, I'll take the post of Minister of Defense. And I'll want a cut of your saffron business, too. I have to agree to that, don't I? You better believe it. He didn't have to kill that poor sweet child. We could have bought her off. You might just be right. Money is like manure in a vegetable garden. If you spread it around in the right places, it does a lot of good. There's something very sad, and perhaps admirable too, about... about a child woman in love. A child woman... I have this crazy feeling that you were never the one nor the other. So how would you know? And it's no good looking at me like that. I don't freeze that easy. There's only one thing you have to remember now. And that is, as long as the money keeps rolling in, that's how long your new regime will last. Never forget that. I bought rather more than just your services, didn't I, Colonel Fest? Like the man said, Mrs. Charters... You get what you pay for. 
stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride, because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care, plus at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Mercenaries was written by Alan Caillou, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Lloyd Bachner and Antoinette Bauer. Also heard were Alan Caillou, Marvin Miller, Ben Wright, Shepard Menken, Richard Peel, and Nadia Caillou. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Blanche and Tony are deeply in love. It was their perfect night. Proper ingredients for murder. Honey, pass the whipped cream. I will not. Blanche, I love whipped cream. Do you love me? Of course I do. More than whipped cream? Tony, you're overweight as it is. Now, Thelma... Thelma? Thelma's doing volunteer work for the American Heart Association, and she was telling me... A lot, knowing Thelma. Tony, I'm serious. A fatty diet is no good for your heart. I don't want you having a heart attack. But, honey... Tony, you could use a lot less, honey. You've been living on sugar alone. Now, we're going to get the American Heart Association's cookbook and make our diets heart healthy so we can be together for a long time. Oh, Blanche, you're sweet. Sweet? Yeah, I know. Contact your American Heart Association for information about a heart-healthy diet. We're fighting for your life. What if you went off to college and found that you were different from everyone else, and everything was designed for them, not for you? Suppose you went to the library and all the books you needed were in Braille, and you were the only one who couldn't read. You'd feel left out, wouldn't you? And what if you went to class and found that there were no chairs because all the other students rolled in with their own wheelchairs? Suppose one of your professors gave his lectures talking with his hands, only his hands, and everyone understood sign language except you. You'd think it wasn't fair. Well, that's how handicapped people feel now when they go to college and find extra handicaps. But things are changing, and we have free information that can help. Write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message on behalf of the United States Office of Education.
Sunday's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. Many lads in this part have taken a hanker into the way she looks. But as soon as she opens that mouth of hers... You, you mean she's not friendly to them? Friendly? She'd make a porcupine look like a pillow cushion. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.